So you're from Namibia. From Namibia, yes. And you went back recently, but it wasn't necessarily for a fun vacation back home. You were there on a mission. Can yes. you tell us about that? Um, so I went back home to Namibia, yeah, not that in May, um, and joined Save the Rhino Trust Namibia, where I kind of wanted to just educate myself on the issue of poaching and rhinos and and what's happening and I wanted to meet the people that are actually on the ground and I wanted to feel like part of it you know I wanted to really throw myself into it and not just um, kind of pretend that I know what's going on and I took three of my friends with to kind of document it and just be with me and we had an incredible time. You didn't take the kids though. I didn't, no, <laughs> not on this one. Got, got a little freedom. Yeah, a yeah. Got, a, got a little freedom and you know I mean initially I'm kind of doing this I think as a mom too for my kids. Save the rhinos. Save the rhinos? Yeah, people. Are you gonna do that one day too? You know I really wanted to live um, by example for them and show them that conservation and caring about the planet is should be normal and should be something you do every day. Why this issue? Why did you decide to get involved with this? For me it started in Namibia because that's where I'm from. It was an easy place that I felt very passionate about. Um, Namibia has the largest number of black rhinos left in the wild um, oh, wow. in Africa so I really feel passionately to keep it that way and I think the reasons why rhinos get poached is so sad because it is for their horn which is made out of keratin, the same as our fingernails and hair. Mm -hmm. So there is no medicinal properties. Well, so there are some misconceptions around yes. the use of, of the horn. Yeah, and it's also, you know, centuries of beliefs that come into play and, and poaching was kind of brought into Africa from the outside world. I mean, how big of a problem is this? And were you surprised when you started digging in around some of the things that you learned? Growing up there, we always knew poaching was an issue, and I never knew that three rhinos get poached a day in wow. Africa. And if it continues at this rate, we won't have any rhinos left in 10 years, which is crazy to me, because um, I grew up with seeing them in the wild, and I want my kids to grow up seeing them in the wild, you know. And also without all these animals, Africa is going to suffer greatly with, with uh, tourism. Mm -hmm. You know, this is why Africa thrives and are, is so special because we have these incredible animals. So it's a big, it's a big issue for us. And I think as a Namibian, as an African, um, I want to be the one making the change and being part of the change. You and know? you said this was an educational trip for right. you. W what did you learn on the trip? Just about how everything works, how poaching works, how how deep it is with governments and you know and poverty and and greed and money. I mean it's so it's such a complex situation and you really need all the parties to work together to make to make a difference. For me it was just really exciting to see how passionate the mm. people on the ground all these trackers that are tracking these rhinos for 21 days and you know in the desert and making sure that they're not getting poached and it's an incredible thing what SRT is doing in Namibia and they're so dedicated to um, spreading awareness and and also stopping poaching. So you went there, you saw, you experienced, you know so much more now. Yeah, yeah. What are you bringing back? What's the next step here? I think the next step is just trying to educate everyone on the subject and I think with the rhinos they've always I felt like gotten the back seat and people don't really know how bad the issue is. And then I would love to educate the youth, you know, both in countries where the demand's coming from and Africa to understand why there is a demand and why, you know, how we can stop it. And to that end, I mean, what is the responsibility of people who have a platform like you do and who have a voice to raise their voice on issues like this? Well, I think in 2019, you know, we're at such a critical moment, I think, in history where both political and environmental is so intense, you know, and so important to whatever you are passionate about and whatever it is to speak up you know it's now the time is now like we don't have years and years left on this planet if we continue the way we we're living so i think if you do have a platform and you do have a a voice there's no excuse not to have some sort of passion to make the um, I'm excited to bring the girls to Africa and to have them experience what I did when I was a kid. You know, I'm going to wait till they're a little older so that they know what's going on because it's a far, it's a long trip. They're two years old and one. They're not going to remember.
Yeah, you know? you, you I'm like, you better remember when I take <laughs> you, you out. Why are you going all the way out there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not, you know, carrying you in your, uh, in your, or uh, pushing your stroll around <laughs> on safari. You better be walking, taking it all in, being excited. Taking pictures yourself. Taking pictures yourself, <laughs> yeah. <laughs>